There's the queen, guys. I found the queen, which is really freaking cool. Let me bring this in. There she is, guys. You see the red on her wings? She's got a much bigger abdomen. I don't know if you guys can see her, but that's the queen, and she is the most important part to this whole thing. Good morning, guys. It's Mike here. I'm back with another video, and today I have a really cool video for you. We're bringing bees, honeybees, to the homestead, and uh, with that comes a lot of great content for you guys and a lot of learning lessons for me. It's spring here. As you can see, I'm standing in front of my plum tree, and it's in full bloom. It needs pollination. Now there's a lot of native pollinators flying around. We wanna bring honeybees in on this action so that we can get some honey out of it and you know have some fun raising bees. So I've done it once before. I kind of failed at it. I'm ready to try it again. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna take you guys into the shop. We're gonna build this brand new beehive uh, that I just got in the mail. It came in a bunch of parts. We have to put it together. We're gonna introduce a new colony to this new beehive and uh, we're gonna start beekeeping. So just full disclaimer, guys, I'm a noob at this. I've never done this. Well, I've done it once before, but I really don't know what I'm doing. I've done a lot of reading, a lot of literature. Uh, that, that I read a couple books over the winter, watched a ton of YouTube content. Shout out to all you YouTubers that make beehive content because I've probably seen your videos. And, um, and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try this out. So without further ado, let's jump into the shop. All right, guys, we're in my shop now, my little shed. I, I have a workbench here that I plan on building these beehive boxes on. Uh, they came in two boxes, as you can see, that I'm right next to. These are full of the parts. I haven't really opened them. I mean, I just kind of peered in, but I haven't taken everything out. Uh, this, these I got from a website called Humble Adode. It's, it's, it's really like a third party website. I'm sure you could find this stuff cheaper elsewhere. And I'm all about supporting a, you know, a small business. So that's what I did. Uh, this is the stuff. It really just comes in pieces, lots of different segments and sections and and uh there's there's you know you can kind of see that's like the outside of of the, one of the the boxes there uh but there's a lot of parts so i'm not going to bore you guys with with building this or this isn't really a tutorial on how to build this because i don't really know myself i'm not an expert in this subject matter but i'm going to figure it out and i'll show you guys some some key points along the way so let's get started on this all right, guys, there's all the components that came out of those two boxes, all the parts. Man, I might be in over my head here. This is, uh, there's a lot of stuff. There's no instruction sheet. So it's kind of just figure it out on your own type of a deal. And I think I could do it, I'm confident. All right, guys, so that's uh, the first section. I just, it really goes together kind of easy. What I found was I have to kind of whack it with a rubber mallet just to get these, uh, these are really tight. I forget, uh, you know, all the woodworkers out there are gonna laugh at me, but I'm forgetting what these joints are called. Um, I really, I forget. Anyway, that's, uh, these joints go in together really nicely. Uh, great construction. There is some gap, very little gaps here. I'm taking glue, I'm using a bead of wood glue, uh, just Gorilla wood glue as I go. So I'm, I'm, you know, this is really tight together. I'm gonna shoot this together now. They gave me uh, this pack of nails, uh, which is cool. I really don't think I'm gonna do this though because I have a, a trim nail gun. So this is, they're about the same type of nails. These are the nails I'm gonna use. Uh, I think they're gonna be okay, but we'll see. I'm gonna shoot this together. All the holes are pre-drilled for me, so I really can't screw this up. You know, they make it really easy for you. Uh, the common beekeeper, even though this is a commercial box. All right, that came out pretty nice. I'm happy with that. Everything is, uh, you know, I didn't screw anything up too bad. And actually, I didn't really screw up anything as far as I can see, unless you guys see something that I could do better. Um, this is it, like erected. This is what it'll look like when it's, you know, complete. But we have all the frames to build now. You can see the queen excluder down there. That's going to prevent the queen from coming up into these two uh, honey supers, so that these will be pure honey, and all the brood and all the good stuff down there will will stay at the two larger boxes. Uh, that's the idea. So now we have a lot of the frames to build, which. I'm not even too sure what I'm doing. So let me figure these out and then I will check back in. All right guys, so I figured out how to build these frames. They're not that difficult, but there is a little bit of a trick to them and I wanna show you that right now. 
Okay guys, pardon that noise that you hear, that's my air gun it is leaking somewhere back here. The thing is really old, but um, basically what we're doing is I'm just gonna show you how this works. So first and foremost, uh, before we even start messing with this, uh, the, the, the wax frame here, you just wanna, there's just this little tab right here that's a part of the frame, it usually comes with this. It's really easy, what you wanna do is just flex it back and forth and break it right off, just like that. So that's step number one, you have to do this. So now that you have that removed, this surface is where those wires that are sticking up like this are gonna lay into. So I'm gonna show you that in real time right now. You take your wax off, you first set the wax into the groove below. This is the bottom groove. Just set it in there, it should go in nice and easy. And now you can tilt this back and just let gravity drop the, fr the wax frame right into that groove that we removed this from. Now, the wires will fit perfectly. And if you could see, they kind of grab, and what, even what you can do is press this in gently and bend the wire so it sits in that right degree, that 90 degree angle, perfect. And that's basically what it looks like when, you, when you're done there. Uh, you sit, it's in the groove set, it's up top, those are flush along that back. And now you take this piece that we broke off and you, you set it back exactly where it was, just like you broke it off, and it's nice and tight, and it pinches those, those wires that sit like this up and in. So now this is really secure. Um, I, what you, I think you can just leave it like this, but I'm actually shooting some really tiny nails with this nail gun. This is the, nail, the nails that I'm using. They're like, I don't, let me see, I think they're, they're five eighths, that's how big they are. Um, very tiny. Basically just shooting three, one, two, and three. So I'll show you how I do that. It's gonna be loud, the compressor might go off, but let's just uh, go for it. And it will sometimes blow a hole right through the wax, which isn't good, you can see that. But you know what, I'm actually glad that happened. So if that happens to you, do not worry, it's okay. The bees will repair that pretty quickly. So, so once, you, uh, once you have it done, um, that, it'll look something like that. Again, there's some of them will have holes that might be damaged. It's okay, the bees will fix it. This is just a base for them to build upon. Um, and then you can go ahead and set it into your, into your boxes. So. If you're like me and you're building new boxes, you'll probably be doing this a lot. It's a very repetitive motion, but um, it is very easy. All right, guys, so I have the beehive all built up. Everything is right here, as you can see next to me. Uh, I have all the frames complete. And now it's time to start painting this thing. I decided to go with white because I think white, uh, it just says beehive. It's most commonly used for beehives, and you know I wanted it to be noticeable but not scream for attention so i didn't want to go with like a a yellow or a, a red um but i also didn't want to go with like a, a green camouflage color i do want people to know that there is a beehive there if they do approach it and there's no better color for that than white all right guys so the bees have arrived i wanted to film while we were you know putting the bees in their new home but the beekeeper delivered them the, the guy that I bought the package from, and he didn't, uh, he wasn't the most photogenic guy. So anyway, they're installed, the bees are in their new home, and as you can see, they're buzzing around. They're, they're uh, figuring it out. This is actually the next day. He came really late last night. It was, the sun was down, it wasn't too late, but the sun went down. Uh, that was the best time to transport them, he said. So anyway, I'm gonna do my first inspection today. I wanna show you what I'm working on right now. All right, so what I have here is just a basic template. Um, it's, it's what they call a hive record card. I pulled this out of one of the books that I read. They say that you should do this at least once every two weeks, and it's just basic information. Like, it, it, it gives you a, a, spot, a spot for your apiary. If you have more than one, I just have one, so we're just gonna use the one. Which queen you have, we actually are named our queen Brittany, based on Britney Spears. Um, we have the reference number, which I don't need that, origin color, clipped year. So, color we know is red, so we'll fill that in. She with this queen that we received was born this year and I'll put a chart up on the screen somewhere, but there's a certain uh, color code per 
a year that the queen was born. So the queens last about, I think, three or four years. So there's a five-year spectrum and uh, every color is different. So you can refer to that, you know, this little chart that I'm going to put up. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So this year is 2023, which means that the, the color is red. So that's our color, red. Uh, we'll call our queen Brit. Britney Spears. Um, clipped, I'm not sure what clipped means. Uh, year, we're in 23. Um, and it just gives you the date. So today is the 15th of April, so 4-15. Queen, present, we don't know. Queen cells, we don't know. Brood frames, this is all the stuff we're gonna go over when we're in there. So um, this is my first time opening it in, you know, since yesterday when the guy came, I didn't really get to open it. He was just kind of moving through it. He wanted to get out of here. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to try to find the queen. Um, I'm going to try to locate queen cells because it is spring and queen cells mean swarming. So we want to stop that from happening. Brood frames. We want to find brood in the, in the hive. Store frames, meaning food. Are they making pollen, honey, things like that, that they can eat. Temper means are they angry? Are they trying to sting me? I hope not because I'm wearing short sleeves. I do have gloves and pants on and I am wearing a veil, so we should be okay. Pollen, we'll look for that. And then comments. So this is, uh, this is what we have here. I'm going to leave this right on the quad there and um, I'll show you how I'm going to start up my smoker. All right, guys, I'm just kind of in the grass here, so bear with me. Um, what I have here is just some paper. So it's like cardboard paper, it came in a box. I'm just gonna stuff that down in the bottom of the, the smoker here. And if you guys aren't familiar with what a smoker is, it closes up like that. It allows air to be pushed in through the bottom. As you push this, smoke comes out the top and, and that calms the bees down. What it does is it, it blocks their communication signals so they can't tell each other the hive is under attack and we need to go into defensive mode. It kind of confuses them and it puts their energy toward um, eating up as much food stores as they can because they think of forest fires in the area. So it kind of preoccupies them in a, in a sense and it's harmless to the bees, harmless to the colony. So um, we do need to have this. I want to smoke them a little bit just to calm them down and uh, get them off of, you know, move their, their uh, attention away from me and toward danger that, you know, they might lose their colony. So it just, uh, you know, makes things a little easier for the beekeeper to get in. And so all I did was really just stuff it with some cardboard. I'm going to go ahead and light this with uh, a torch. You gotta be careful when you're dealing with fire like this. It can get hot, obviously. See that? I'm pushing the air into the bottom and it's making a flame. And we don't necessarily want flame, we want smoke, so we'll, we'll smother that a little bit. And get this going. And there you go, you guys see that? We have smoke. Beautiful. This will keep us uh, safe from the bees. All right, let's, uh, let's go over to the hive. I don't know if you guys can see, but I am veiled up. I've got my, my head garment on. Um, bees will typically go for carbon dioxide that you excrete from your mouth and nose. That's just what they're programmed to do because their common predators are like bears and raccoons and things that steal honey. So, um, you know, they, you want to definitely protect your head. My arms, I've been stung many times before. I'm not a, uh, allergic to bees, so uh, if I get stung in the arms, I can handle that. So I'm wearing pants, I'm wearing a shirt, making sure that I have some protective gear on my fingers. I don't like when my fingers get stung and um, we have smoke that'll keep us safe. So let's go in there and let's try to find the queen. She's marked in red and let's just see what we can see. That's all we're trying to do today. This is our first inspection. Let's get in there and take a look.
All right, guys, look at that. These are the bees. So, really cool stuff. So what I'm looking for here is the queen. She's marked in red. I see some bees have some pollen on them, which is really cool. Um, let's see what's going on on the other side here. I hope my arm's not in the way, but just kind of quickly looking. They're all, they all have their heads in the comb there's some good honey in there what they're doing is they're eating up as much honey as they can filling their bellies because they think a fire is in the area uh, which is okay they'll put it right back where it needs to be and i'm not seeing the queen on this frame i also don't have the the most trained eye but um all right we'll set this one back in there Nice and easy. I'll actually take a, a regular frame out. These are these are brand new. They haven't drawn any comb out on that yet. Um, and I'm going to just push this over. This is the one we just looked at. We'll push this one over. We'll get some smoke in the air. And guys, again, I'm a complete novice at this. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning here. You know, this is my, my one of my first times. So if you're an experienced beekeeper, leave a comment down below. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I'm doing right. And uh, go ahead and give me a like while you're at it. Okay, this is the second frame. Again, I'm looking for the queen. She'll be marked in red. I'm gonna go ahead and say their temperament is great. These bees are not aggressive at all. They're not, I haven't been stung once. I'm not, they're not trying to sting me. What do we got? I see some pollen. I see some brood. I see no, oh, there's the queen, guys. I found the queen, which is really freaking cool. So, let me bring this in. There she is, guys. You see the red on her wings? She's got a much bigger abdomen. I don't know if you guys can see her, but that's the queen, and she is the most important part to this whole thing. I'm happy she's alive, she's well, she's checking in cells. She's got her little posse following her. And man, that's really cool. There she goes, right there, so. That's, um, that's good. I, I really just wanted to make sure she was okay. I think I'm gonna stop there. I know this was a super short um, inspection, but it's, you know, they just got here yesterday. I saw some brood. I saw some, some pollen. I saw some honey. I think that they're okay. Um, I'm happy with that. That was the, that we got really lucky on the second frame there that we found her. So I'm just pushing these all nice and tight again. Push these in nice and close, nice and cozy. I'll put that last frame in. And then what I'm gonna actually do is leave these guys alone, or these gals alone for um, a couple weeks, probably two weeks. I won't do the next inspection. That was, uh, that was a successful inspection if I've ever had one. 
just by finding that queen, I'm super happy. So I'm just gonna put this back on just the way we found it. And that should be okay. All right, guys. Okay, guys, so, uh, let's see if I'm... All right, guys, so, today is uh, week two, I guess the seven days from my last uh, entry into the hive here. I got my smoke going. I'm gonna go in, and uh, today's, the, 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 you know, the goal of today's uh, inspection is I wanna see how much they've done in a week. So, uh, they're getting kind of upset right now. I'm just gonna smoke the area smoke the entrance of the box um, and I'm gonna go in here I'm looking to see how much comb they've drawn out on the, the frames that were brand new and um, I'm just taking a general inspection so I want to bring you guys along with me on this whole process so let's get into this box so let me show you guys some comb that they're building just on the top here. Now, I don't necessarily want this. Looks like there might even be some kind of honey or nectar. I'm actually gonna give this a taste, guys. I know this is kind of crazy, but I gotta give it a shot. Let me let me taste this stuff. Make sure it's not poison, you know what I mean? Oh, guys, that's honey under there. <laughs> that's real good honey. Man, that tastes good, but we don't necessarily want them do, uh, doing this here, so I'm just going to go ahead and scrape this stuff right off with the hive tool. Pretty good stuff. Okay, um, that's gonna give us kind of a better angle, guys. And, you know, let me know down in the comments if you think these angles are, are shot and they're not good. Um, I could always try to get better. I'm always trying to get better, but, you know, I'm still new at this whole YouTube thing and especially beekeeping. So let me know down in the comments what you think and if, you know, I can improve and how. So anyway, let's start from the outside here. These are frames that were brand new. Uh, they're really not doing much on this frame. As you can see, there's a couple bees kind of hanging out. Looks like they might be starting to draw comb out, but really not much progress yet. So we'll put this one back in and leave it be. It's also very important to note, you want to, the way you take the frames out or the way you want to put them back in. Uh, that's, that's important. So what I usually do is I'll, I'll take the last frame out and then move everything over and then move everything back and put that last frame in if that makes any sense i hope it does so let's see what else these guys are up to or gals i should say and i am going to be looking for the queen while I do this, although this isn't necessarily the point of this inspection. If I don't see here, I'm okay with that. So looking here, it looks like there's a ton of uh, unfinished you know, pollen or they're turning it into honey. It's not honey yet. You can see it kind of shiny down in the cells there, um, which is really cool. They're making, they're working is what they're doing. So that's good. They've drawn out a lot of comb. Now this is one of the new frames as well. So this is all new. Uh, comb that they've drawn out and they haven't put any brood in it the queen hasn't put any brood she's just filling it or the the workers are just filling it with nectar which is really cool stuff you can see they're all they all have their heads in the cells they're drinking up all the honey they're not happy that there's a fire, a potential fire nearby. So we'll put this frame right back in, just like we it, it came out. We'll slide it out of the way, and I'm happy with that. So let's check to see what one of these existing, this is how the new came these, on these frames here. You can see the color differentiation. 
Let's see what's going on with these. Oh boy, look at this. So I guess they started connecting the frames. And if you could see, I actually exposed some brood there on accident by just pulling this frame apart, which isn't ideal, but I have to get in here and, and do my, my inspection. So hopefully they're able to recover. They can cap those brood back up. You can see that I did expose some brood and that's very unfortunate, but, um, you know, oh, and I did see a hive beetle just now. So that means that those are definitely present. Um, we're gonna work to treat those. Yeah, and she's laying on the bottom there, which I don't necessarily love, but she is laying, lots of new healthy babies. I'll set this one back in there. Get the next one out. Hey guys, today's week three, and it's the third hive inspection of our new uh, beehive that I have right behind me there. So we're gonna get in there and look at it, but this week we're doing something new and, and pretty important. So we're gonna be installing these things right here, and these are what are called uh, hive beetle traps. And the, the way they are designed is the bees can go into, or the, the hive beetles can go into these little traps they'll fall down into some oil that I put in there, just regular vegetable oil, actually this is olive oil, um, but it doesn't matter what kind of oil, you wanna have something that the beetles will fall into and not be able to climb out of. Uh, and then they'll eventually perish down there. But these little holes are meant for uh, only the beetles to pass through. The bees cannot get in there. But what the bees will do is they'll chase the hive beetles into these traps. Um, just, just the way they go. And when the bees see the hive beetles, they kind of chase them and go after them. And eventually, they'll, they'll most of the time, most of them will go find their way into these traps and then die. So they can't reproduce. And the bees can then manage the, the hive beetle population. Now, this isn't going to eradicate them at all, but it's going to help add another layer of defense against these hive beetles. So uh, that's what we're installing today. I'll show you guys how to do that. I don't want to make this intro too long, so let's jump right into the, the hive. I just have to get suited up and we'll check them out. I'm just smoking them a little bit up top. Looks like they're building some comb up here. So let's see if we can pop this guy off. I do have my hive tool this time. I don't know if I forgot it last time or not, but let me just give these guys some smoke, the entrance. Okay. Looks like they are moving into some new territory here, some new frames, which is great. Let's take out the first one. Give us some room. They haven't done much on these, these outside frames, which is good to note because 
that'll tell me that I don't need to add um, another box up top yet. But as you can see here, they are starting to build out comb, which is really cool. Uh, this is what it looked like to start, and they're building new comb out, which is awesome. Let me try to give you guys a little, you can see this all right here is new wax and comb, and they'll repair that, but just wanted to show you. Oh yeah, guys, this is great. Look, this is all new as of the last inspection. And you could see they're working it. They're putting honey in there. Uh, lots of pollen. I see they have some capped honey, which is good to note. I see some bees with some uh, pollen baskets on them, which is pretty cool. Glad to see it. That's on this side. And on this side, not too much going on. They haven't started to do much, but a little bit of honey, and they're all drinking it up right now to the hive. I'm just moving them over. Okay, now this is one of the existing frames. And as you can see, they're, they're still building comb out underneath. I don't know if I should clean that off or not, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna damage any new bees, any uh, brood. So I'm looking for the queen. I don't see her on this frame. Let's go to the other side now. Again, looking for the queen, but looks like they have a lot of capped brood here, which is good to see. You see some open brood cells. And look, check underneath here. You see some more brood under there. Again, is good to see. Still no sign of the queen. So I'll set this down very gently. I want to make sure she's not under here because I really don't want to smash her on accident. So, so I see some drones in there, which is interesting to see. So we'll set this back in just like we pulled it out. And we'll move it over. And we'll check the next one. Okay, so we definitely have something going on. We have a lot of brood at the bottom there. I think that's what brood looks like. And every time I take these guys out, I think I disturb them a little bit in terms of like ripping some brood out, but that's okay. There it is again underneath. I don't know if I should be removing that or not, but I'm not gonna. Still looking for the queen. They are getting a little bit testy now. I could hear them. Um, so I'm gonna move a little bit quicker. Just looking for the queen. No sign of her still. So I see some big drones, which are really cool to see. Um, I don't know if that means they're getting ready to swarm or if it's just that time of year. No sign of the queen on this frame. So I'll set it down. I do have some bees landing on me. Give them some smoke. I 
they're definitely not happy with me in here um which is different last time they were pretty uh they were docile i mean they're not attacking i haven't been stung once yet just just giving you guys a heads up but um you know they're definitely making some more noise so i just want to show i'm really looking for the queen i want to see her on this event on this open now there are brood like freshly laid eggs this one's like a mix. There's honey. They got a lot going on with this one. A lot of brood on the bottom, which are growing, and that's a good sign. There's actually some brood being hatched right now, which is really cool. And I'm happy to see this because that means that the hive is healthy and they're growing. They're getting stronger, so. Let me set this back in. Still no sign of the queen. She's not sticking out at me. She's colored in red. But we'll keep looking. We have about two or three more frames to look at. So let's check them out. Now I just disur disturbed quite a bit of brood they're kind of building their comb a little erratic. You see at the bottom there is a big larva. And I don't want to mess with those. I really, I'm really not happy with uh, kind of exposing them, but I think, the, I think they'll take care of her. I've seen everything I had to see. I haven't made it to these other frames, but honestly, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to set this down very gently because there are a lot of brood on the bottom. I'm gonna kind of smash them back into place. Well, not smash, that's not the right word, but you know, fit them into place nice and tight. And then I'm gonna close them up because I found the queen. I saw she's laying fresh eggs, which is a great sign. She's, um, there's larva being hatched. There's lots of honey, lots of pollen. And I'm happy with that. So I'm not gonna go through these other frames. I can kind of look down in here and see that their uh, things are okay. But what I am gonna do is before I close it up, I'm gonna install these um, these uh, beetle traps, these larva beetle traps, and I'm just gonna see if maybe I can fit it in right there at the end. Okay, so I just grabbed a new frame. The one I had actually fell apart, I don't know. It's too tight, I'm not sure what's going on, so. All right, we're in, it's tight. Yeah, I think. I'm not too sure, it's not really flush. I don't know if it's gonna work if it's not flush. So I might be taking a frame out, guys, and uh, maybe dealing with the consequences because I want this thing to, to be flush. So I think I'm gonna pull it up here. I'm gonna put it here. I might just put the other one right there as well. Try this again. Yeah, this isn't going to fit. Maybe. I don't know, really know. We'll see if that works. We'll give that a try. I'm going to close these guys up. Maybe I'll clean the top of... Put our top board back on, just like that. Let's see how this fits, just like that. Guys, so that was the, uh, the, the inspection for week three, and I'm really happy with that inspection. We, uh, going off the, the checklist that I, uh, we came up with here, 
looking through it was the queen present. Yes, we did see the queen. Were there queen cells? Not that I could identify. There were some big clusters at the bottom, but I think those are just brood because the, the, the nuke frames were a little bit shorter than the hive box that I built. Just different brands. They weren't as compatible as I originally thought they would have been. So there's, a, there's like an inch gap underneath at the bottom and that's allowing them to have room to build out cells which the queen is actually laying brood in so i don't want to clean that off with my uh, hive tool because then we'll be killing a bunch of brood and those are some pretty big larvae almost looking ready to hatch so we're going to leave those be and i'm going to say that those aren't queen cells although i'm not a hundred percent sure so we'll say no for that brood frames um is the next thing on our list here and yes we did see brood frames which is exciting that means that she's laying new eggs and those are actually um going on to becoming full-grown larvae and then we did actually see one hatching too which was so cool i've never seen that before in any of the videos that i've seen online or in any of the books so just watching her little head kind of poke through that that wax seal um, and having the other nurse bees come and feed her was was really really cool i was happy to see that um, and then there was store frames, meaning there was their honey and nectar and bee bread, uh, which is fermented nectar and pollen, which, um, which they eat. And I would say yes to all of that. I saw all of them. I saw capped honey. I saw all types of different, you know, stages of honey and nectar and pollen. So that was cool. And I did see a ton of the bees coming back with big pollen baskets, big full pollen baskets and all the pollens really bright yellow, which it is dandelion season here in, in New Jersey. We're at the first week of May. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of yellow nectar and pollen out. That makes sense why they would have that. So the next is temper. And I would say they, they started out calm and then they got a little more rowdy. I, it was like a, a notable uh, change in pitch in the humming and the buzzing. So it was kind of started out as a low, normal hum, I would say. And then uh, the bees around me that were kind of, they weren't stinging me or attacking me, but they were flying around, swarming a little bit. That noise increased in pitch and I could hear it. It was like a, a primal, instinctual feeling in me that, that uh, said, okay, they're up, up unhappy. They're upset right now. So it was pretty interesting. So I'm not going to say they were calm. I'm going to say calm slash irritated. Um, this way, you know, I'll know in the future. Pollen is the next column here. And I would say, yeah, we did see some pollen. There was a lot of pollen coming in on their legs, on their pollen baskets, and in the cells themselves that they're storing and stashing away. So that was a great inspection, guys. Looking over everything. I'm actually going to put in the comments here, great inspection. We saw the queen we saw everything so uh, we also installed those hive beetles and I'll put that in the comments as well we installed the hive beetle traps so uh, hopefully next time next week when we go in and take a look at them maybe two weeks from now I'll, um, I'll confirm that there was beetles in the hive traps and which would be a great thing to see because that means we're pulling them out uh, out of the you know ecosystem inside of the hive so um, anyway guys that's it week three so let's check in for week four next week see you then all right guys and just like that another week goes by T today is the first day of week four and it is our fourth hive inspection so behind me is the hive let's get suited up and get in there i want to wrap this video up i want to get it uploaded so uh this will be the last segment of the the series here i guess but i'll update in future videos on how the hive's doing i'll probably put together a little bit of a, a montage video toward the end of the year when hopefully we harvest some honey and i'll put some clips throughout the season of them growing but not much is going on i mean i'll probably add another uh super on top of this uh brood box and uh and that's really it they're just going to be on autopilot for this season i'll probably spread my my inspections out to two weeks instead of one week and they're humming along so let's get it suited up and into the hive for our final inspection of this video so let's do it okay guys we're back i have uh, my veil on i got my smoker that's going and i have my hive tool so before we get into the beehive here i just want to go over two things so a little bit of an update one i did the research on the the uh when to add another box on top of your existing box and what i found was uh the internet generally says after they've drawn out uh like the eighth 
the eighth frame in. So you wanna, you don't want them to be drawing out comb on the last two frames on the outside of the box. That means it's, you wanna get a box on ASAP. Um, we're gonna go in and see where they're drawing comb and we're gonna see if they're putting nectar and honey in those two outer frames and then we'll add a box maybe today. I have it ready, so uh, that's, a, that's a big maybe. Um, second thing is the, the uh, hive beetle traps. Uh, I want to confirm that the bees are chasing the hive beetles into those reservoirs and the beetles are dying in the oil uh, that's in those reservoirs. So that'll be cool to see. We'll check those out. And then we're going to try to find the queen like we always do. See if there's our regular checklist going through. Brood, honey, nectar, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But my smoker is going, so let's jump in that hive right now. We'll get a little smoke. Look at them all up top here. That's pretty cool. Looks like they're drawing comb out and putting honey in this top box here. You can see that there's a lot of honey dripping. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is some honey that's dripping. So we'll just set that aside. Oh yeah, I see that they are definitely drawing out comb and some new frames out here, which is really cool. So let's first pull these hive, these hive beetle traps up. And it looks like there's no hive beetles in this trap. Nothing there. So, not a great sign, but it might mean that there's not as many hive beetles as we thought. And in this one, there's also no hive beetles. So, nothing, uh, no hive beetles in there. Give them a little smoke, the entrance, and then I like to keep the smoker nearby so it it's kind of smokes out everyone out there. Let's see if we can get. Okay, so this is the furthest frame outside, and they are definitely drawing comb. So. Um, I don't, I see some nectar in there, maybe some beginning stages of honey, which is really cool, but we're definitely going to want to add our box on today, a separate box. So uh, that will happen. We'll take this frame out. I'll kind of just lean it up. Oh, this one's heavy guys. I could tell that they're definitely working here. Look at that. They are putting a ton of, looks like uh, pollen and nectar. They're making honey. There's some capped honey at the top corner there. You see that white cap? Those are, uh, those, that's honey that's capped over. So they are doing a really good job here. And on the other side, same deal. Just a bunch of honey, which means that we're gonna add a second box. All right, I've got the extra. This is a brand new box here. 10 frames in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yep. Um, all the frames are brand new as well. I built all these in the beginning of this video. And we're just gonna add that guy right on top, give him some more room to expand into. This is exciting. So, great. Now I think with the hive tool, 
I am going to clean up this top a little bit. I don't know if I necessarily want them to be building all of this up here. So, just going to do some scraping. And man, they suck that honey up quick. Just give them a little smoke a get them out of here. I'm actually going to do one of these. I'm going to tap them right down into the bottom of the box. All right, that looks pretty clean. Scrape all this off. Happy with that. Go and put that right back into place. It actually goes this way. Nope, I'm sorry, it goes this way. Okay. Alright guys, so here's a little after action report. Um, I was quick in there. I didn't spend too much time. I didn't look through all the frames like I usually do. I confirmed that there was brood, which there are. There's some new brood being laid and there's a ton of honey, guys. I, I was so shocked at how much work they did in just a week's time. They, they, they filled out like two or three new, brand new frames full of honey. So that was exciting uh, and I did confirm that I had to add another box up top. So I'm glad that you know, I asked that question last time, did my homework and found I, it was time for a new box. So they have plenty of room to grow. They'll grow up now. They'll go upstairs and uh, I didn't put a queen excluder so the queen can go up there and maybe lay some new brood, uh, which would be good. That's what we're looking for. Um, the next step would be to add a queen excluder, which goes between the brood box and the honey super to keep the queen downstairs and not go up where, they, where the honey's gonna be. And then we'll start making some honey. But but um, this, is, this is something I took from the top of the hive. They started laying, putting honey up on that top box that I just cleaned and I took some with me and I wanted to share this with you on camera. This is just a piece of comb with a bunch of honey in it. And I'll show you that honey again. You could see in the comb there is that, that glaze look and that's actually honey. That's not finished honey. They didn't cap it, but it's honey nonetheless. And you, I'd be crazy if I didn't eat it. So I'm going to give it a shot right now on camera for you guys. And, and uh, I'll let you know how it is. So here we go. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's delicious, guys. It tastes like honey, except a little bit more liquidy. Little, little, like almost like a syrup, if you know it, like a maple syrup tastes like. Similar in the consistency, but honey flavor. And wow, that's really good. Mmm. There wasn't much, but there was enough for me. Wow. I can't get enough of that, guys. I am so excited to collect some honey from these at the end of the season. So, uh, so uh, that's the end of this segment, this por portion of this series. I I, like I said, it was one month. It was the start to finish. Uh, the, the bees are doing great, as you can see. They're, they're putting honey brood. Everything is going on in the right direction. We have our hive beetle traps in there. I inspected for varroa mites. Didn't find much. I mean, there, there's signs of them, but not much. I'm not, I'm not going to treat them for Varroa until the end of the year after I, I get honey. And then I'll, I'll give them a treatment. 
Um, but they, I added the box. It looks good. It's going to sit like this probably until midsummer before I start adding honey supers up. And, uh, and once we're in that honey flow, I, I believe it's called, is, is when I'll start stacking some supers up there and then getting some honey for us. But uh, anything, anything right now that they make is going to be for them for the winter and for their new brood to feed and, and grow their, their colony. So uh, that's the end of this part. I will catch up with you guys on the next one. Thanks for coming along. I hope that you experienced beekeepers aren't cringing from all the mistakes that I'm making right now. Uh, but I'm learning guys and I'm learning with you. So hopefully you guys can learn something from my mistakes or just enjoyed coming along for the ride with me. Uh, give me the thumbs up if you like this video. I'm kind of new to making videos. I, I have a couple, you know, I think like 35 uploaded now. So um, come along with me on this journey, this YouTube journey and give me a subscribe. So I will catch up with you guys on the next video and between now and then, get outside and have fun. Take care. Lulu's been watching me eat this honey and she wants to, she wants to get a little whiff of it herself. We'll see if she likes honey. She took the whole comb, so I think that's a good sign, but she's doing some inspection. What do you think about that, Lulu? Is that something that you're into? Maybe not? I don't think she likes honey or honeycomb. So anyway, let's get out of here. Good girl.